So, hello everybody. Welcome to Tips and Tricks for Productivity with Kirby. I am Kirby. And I am the Vice President of Marketing and Communications at the LAX Coastal Chamber. I'm also the manager of LAX Coworking, which is the wonderful space that you guys are all in. And I went over this briefly earlier, but again, I'm in charge of all things communications and creative. We like to say my unofficial tagline is that I make things pretty, but I'd also like to think that I make things work because it isn't just about the design, it's about proper execution and detailed maintenance. So I have lots of jobs here at the Chamber, I do lots of projects, a million things are almost always on my plate and I always get a lot of people that ask me how do I do what I do since there are so many things going on and think about all of the events the chamber has all of the events that co-working has all of the room rentals like last year I think we discovered we had hosted over 200 meetings in our space and I handle the calendar for that plus I have to do our chamber blog I have to do our newsletter I have to do our monthly newsletter our magazine our annual report there are a million things so one of the things that I like to say I do is I kind of cheat it isn't really cheating because I'm not like stealing things from other people and I'm not shysting people, I'm not doing anything like that. It's more I am finding all of the wonderful shortcuts that make life so much easier. So this pretty much means if there's something that I can do from scratch, cool. If there's something that I can do that's already 90% done and then I can work with it, that is much better. That is exactly what you want to do because you only have 24 hours in a day and it is very, very difficult to get everything done in 24 hours if you're doing every single thing from the beginning. So you got to find ways to cut corners, you got to find ways to make it a little bit faster, and you have to find ways to utilize the resources that are open to you. Really quickly before I go into what these resources are, let's pass one of these down to Becca. Whoop. Pass that down. Welcome, welcome. Um, this might sound silly, but literally think about using shortcuts. Every single computer has shortcuts and hotkeys. And I thought that it was common knowledge, but every so often I've talked to people and I'll go, yeah, just copy and paste that. And they're going file, copy, clicking somewhere else, mm -hmm. file, paste, no. You think it just takes up five seconds of your day, but five seconds of your day repeated hundreds of times a day, because literally, think about how many times you copy and paste. You're going to do it a lot. Learn to use your hotkeys. Command C, Command V. Command X is a beautiful one. That cuts. I love that one. Figure out what your computer can do for you faster and use it. Also, this is going to be a total weird one, but this so this was a present for me from one of my clients, which is wonderful. It is a fancy mouse and it is a programmable mouse. If you get a mouse that has a whole bunch of buttons, you can program every single button to do something. So if there are actions that you do all the time, program a button and it saves you the 20 steps. So there are folders that I open 50 times a day. I've literally programmed one of the buttons that I just click it and bam, that folder opens. I don't have to go to desktop, file explorer, pick my Google Drive, then go to LAXCC, then go to freelance, then go to, none of that is what I have to do. You just find something that's gonna make it a shortcut. Use shortcuts, shortcuts are wonderful. So today I am going to go over not only a few shortcuts that I use, but a lot of the resources that I have found that I use on a regular basis that some people don't necessarily know about. I don't know if all of these resources are going to be helpful for you guys, but if even just one of them makes your life easier and makes you more productive, then my goal has happened for the day. Everybody has this handy little cheat sheet, which is going to help you when you leave, just in case you forget anything that I went over, but it also does a brief explanation of what it is and reminds you of where you can get it or where you can download it. So we are going to start with learning help. I am a huge fan of learning something new every day. On my website I even tried to start a blog that was called Learn Me Something New. I apparently took learning a little bit too seriously. My blog posts were like five pages long. Nobody read it. They were like, oh God, please stop. So I stopped. <laughs> Once I learn how to cut down my learning into maybe like four or five paragraphs, I might start that back up again. But 
yeah, I go a little too extensive. But for those who also like learning things, if you've ever heard of lynda.com, it is a fantastic resource. And it has also been recently rebranded as LinkedIn Learning. So LinkedIn purchased lynda.com, and now it is pretty much just an online hub with a whole bunch of videos, tutorials, walkthroughs, information on how to do anything you want to do. If you go in and say, I'm a designer, I want help with Illustrator specifically, Hundreds of videos are gonna pop up to tell you how to do a whole bunch of things within Illustrator. It covers programs, it covers marketing, it covers social media, and it's a whole bunch of videos of people just like you and me talking about this is how I do what I do and this is how you can do it too. It makes it super easy and I know that some of it can be for free and some of it is for pay. What's up? I'll let you know that um before LinkedIn bought it, so it's probably still the same though. Uh -huh. Through LAPL, which you have next. Yes. Free. Yes. For Linda for free. Um, it should still be the same. When I actually tried looking for that, it was very hard for me to find. It was like you had to go to all these back ends to find it, but still try to figure it out. Start your free month. Note that when it says buy for my team, they you have to be like a team of 10 minimum or something like that, because I was very curious about it because we were gonna buy it for chamber staff. And then they were like, oh, you don't qualify, you're too small, because the chamber is very, very small. Um, but there are options out there. And even if you have to pay for it, I think it's just like a year fee, and it's like a couple hundred bucks. But if you're even going to use it a couple times a month, it's definitely worth it because it is a wonderful resource. I actually learned about it because I went to school at Otis, Otis College of Art and Design, right down the way. Otis is great. Um, you get a free Linda. They're also a chamber member. <laughs> you get a free Linda.com membership with your um, student ID, which was wonderful. So I use it all the time, which is great because you're doing so much stuff when you're at Otis and you need all the help you can get. Um, you can also do a workaround if you just go to YouTube and you look for videos on how to do whatever. I Google almost every day like how to do this in Illustrator or how to do that. That involves a little more work because you have to go through a few more sites, find out who's trusted, find out what actually works, make sure it's the most up-to-date version of Illustrator because sometimes there are videos of people telling you how to do something in 2002 and I'm sorry, but the software doesn't work like that anymore. Um, but it is available, so use it. The moment you think you don't know how to do something or you think you can do it better, Google it. Actually, Google probably should have been the first resource, but you guys all know about that, so you're smart. Public library. If you have a public library card, you can check out audiobooks for free. And that includes professional audiobooks, that includes business audiobooks. There are so many things, as well as like podcasts and things like that, that you can get through this membership and you never have to actually go to a library. I love libraries. I have almost no time to just go and chill at the library. But the fact that I can do it digitally makes it so much easier. And I believe there's also an app that you can download and then you can just listen to it whenever you you're ready for it. The only downside to this, hmm? I think Overdrive. Yeah. It's the one you use for the public library. So yeah. Download and listen to audiobooks. The only downside I have found from this, and I haven't experienced it yet, but my sister has a lot, is that if you're going for an audiobook that's really popular, yep. even though it's a digital file, they say that there's only like 10 copies available and you have to go on a waiting list. But if things are older and they're not brand new, you can check it out just fine. Put yourself on the waiting list. They'll let you know when you can download it. So again, learn stuff all the time. Next we have, sorry, microphone, I'm smacking you. We have computer help. This one is probably a little bit pricey. I don't know if it's gonna work for everybody, but if you're part of a larger company, I definitely recommend you checking this out. So we have a chamber member named TWE Solutions. They do all of our IT and they help us with stuff and they're absolutely fabulous and they are very local, so we like them. They introduced us to this magical thing called Autotask Workplace. Autotask Workplace is pretty much like Google Drive and Dropbox and every single cloud server or everything you've ever had, an external hard drive, everything all in one. And it works wonderfully. You can sync it to your computer and use it just like a regular folder. You can access it online through a website from any computer. It has a fabulous app 
that actually works because there are so many of those cloud services that once you get to the app, it doesn't work. I can look up my Excel spreadsheets, my Word documents, my PDFs, everything on my phone within seconds, which is absolutely fantastic. And then I can email it to people straight through the app. I can edit it straight through the app and it has a whole bunch of cloud services. It saves every single iteration of every single file that is hosted on there. So if you're like, oh, I really want to see what this file looked like in February of 2017, it is up there. If somebody accidentally erases it or accidentally messes it up, you can restore old versions. You can restore deleted files. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. And it's great for sharing with other people because not only can you and your coworkers be in one hub and everybody can have the same files that automatically sync and upload anytime somebody edits it. It tells you the moment Christina Davis is working on this file so I know she's changing something. It tells you the moment she saves it so I can now edit it and look at it. It also allows you to do public share links and you can share it to the public. You can share the folder. You can say, I want this to only be viewed 10 times. I want this to only be downloaded 25 times, or I want this to last for two weeks. You can make everything super specific. I have no idea how much it costs. No clue whatsoever, <laughs> but it works great. And because I'm not paying for it out of pocket, I say it is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is, a, who here has Windows 10? Does anybody actually use Cortana? She's probably gonna pop up because she's gonna hear me talk to her. So Cortana is fabulous. I use Cortana every single day. Let's see if I can. Hey, Cortana. It's because I'm in a PDF. She's not listening to me. That's just rude. Um, so pretty much when, let's see if we can get out of it. We're gonna try that again. Hey, Cortana. <gasps> Are you ignoring me? That's rude. So normally it's set up that you can tell it to activate anytime you say, hey, Cortana, and you can tell it, I want everybody to be able to say, hey, Cortana, or I want her to just notice my voice. And then you can talk to her. You literally just go like, tell me a joke. Oh, I don't have sound on. Oh, it's through that. So why was the calendar nervous? Because its days were numbered. <laughs> I fell in love with Cortana because the first time I asked her to tell me a joke, she said, um, what do you do if you get attacked by a bunch of clowns? You go for the juggler. And that's just, that's disturbing and corny and violent all at once. And I was like, Cortana, you get me. This is the first time I've talked to you and we are already best friends. But Cortana is a wonderful resource because I love to set up the voice recognition because throughout the day I say, hey Cortana, open Windows Outlook. Hey Cortana, open Adobe Illustrator. Hey Cortana, oh, shush, no, no. Shush, <laughs> now she's listening to me. You can tell her to set a reminder. The moment somebody tells me to do something, and if I'm typing something and I don't have time to set a reminder myself, I go, hey Cortana, remind me to send the weekly at 3 p.m. And she goes, did you want me to remind you to send the weekly at 3 p.m.? And then you just say yes, and she sets it up. You can tell her to set alarms, you can tell her to send emails, you can tell her to do all of these things within your computer that you no longer have to do. You don't have to open up your calendar and set an alarm and do all this sort of stuff. It saves that step for you. She also is a wonderful search function in your computer because if you use the search bar and just type sales, it will pop up videos that have sales in it, pictures that have sales in it, any file on your computer that have sales in it. So again, if you don't have time to go through the 20 layers of file management, I don't know if your files are as bad as mine, but mine are ridiculous, I have way too many, and you know, I know that this file is called this, you search it, she'll automatically open it for you. You can even tell her to open the file if you don't wanna search it, but then you have to remember exactly what it's called. She <laughs> is a wonderful, wonderful resource. And also you can just say, hey Cortana, help. And she'll go, oh hey, don't forget Forget. these are all of the things that I can tell you to do and that you can talk to me about on your computer. So she saves you time, she's wonderful, her voice is very nice, their only fault with Cortana, and I'm sorry Windows, but you're just gonna have to deal with this, is Cortana uses Bing. So if you tell her to search for something, she's gonna open up Bing. Nobody uses Bing, we know this. It's, it's sad, but she does. You can also have, she's like calculator, you can tell her like what's the weather today, what is 52 plus 8, like all of this, oh, that's 60, that one's too easy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have done something a little harder than that. Um, but she's, she's great, she cuts a lot of corners for you. So definitely use her, set her up, figure it out. 
I also love easy texting. We used to do text notifications for all of our coworkers to let you know what the current schedule was, when something special was happening, if we were closing early, if we were opening late, all sorts of things. Easy texting is absolutely free. You just make sure you get permission from people. You go into the system, you say, I want to text this group. Hey guys, don't forget that we have an event today at 11.30, it's tips and tricks for productivity with Kirby, register here, include a link, and it will send a text to everybody. It also then gives you all of the stats. It tells you who viewed the text, who blocked the text, who responded to the text. You get notifications, it's wonderful. Texting your clients and customers doesn't work for every single business, but for those it does, this is definitely a great resource because it is entirely free, super easy to use. We use it for like a year and then the coworkers just didn't want text anymore and they were like, never mind. So we just went to, you get the newsletter and then it's up to you if, if you read it or not. You can also do my live chat for free. And so if you've ever been to the LAX co-working website, there's a nifty little chat now at the bottom right corner. That is my live chat. You can add a chat function to your website entirely free. It is super easy to use, very easy to set up. You can also download a client that puts it on your computer and basically opens a live chat window on your computer. So the moment somebody logs on, it tells you, it does a little notification, it'll be like, blah, 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 somebody's here. It tells you what page of the website they're on it tells you what they're looking at how long they've looked at it and then you can either send them a message and go hey I see you're looking at our rates did you have any questions or they can send you a message in the chat box just pops up right on your desktop doesn't interrupt any of your software anything you're working on it just pops up you respond you can send an automatic away and say hey I'm busy right now and it automatically responds or if you're not logged in at all it just sends you an email and then in that email, you can respond straight to that email to talk to that person in real time. It is super wonderful, and it's a great resource to make you look more accessible even if you're not actually there. And again, free. I love free. Gift maker. Has anybody ever had to make gifts before? This isn't very often. Sometimes it's just for fun. Sometimes it's practical. We do a GIF every single month in our monthly newsletter of all of the logos of all of the new companies that join the chamber. You can make a GIF in Photoshop. And can I tell you that I made GIFs in Photoshop for about a year before I realized that there was a much better way to do this mm -hmm. because you literally have to open like a square and then you put the white in the background and then you drop the logo and then you say that that's one layer and then you add another layer and then you tell it to make a thing and then you've got this whole big thing and then you tell it how to transition in between them and it takes you like 30 minutes and it is ridiculous. Or you can just save everybody's logos, go to gifmaker.org, say upload images, tell it you want it to be at 100% size, you want it to change every 2,000 milliseconds, that's what I do, it's, it's a nice steady pace. And then you say make GIF and you're done in 30 seconds. It's wonderful, it has saved me so much time and I'm also very depressed to realize that I wasted so much time before realizing that maybe there was a better way to do it. But again, this is why I do presentations like this because you never know how many people are doing things the slow way just because they have no idea that there is a better option. So if you ever have to make a GIF, Gift maker is the best. Deliver it. Now this is the one that I just learned from Natalie Goucher. I have not used it yet, but I trust Natalie Goucher explicitly, so I am going to believe that it works. Supposedly the way this works is you make an account and you tell it every time this resource posts an update or a blog post or a <laughs> newsletter or something, I trust it enough to automatically share it through my portal. So if you love every single article that the LA Times comes out with, you can tell it anytime the LA Times posts something, automatically share it onto my page. If you really like Coastal Comments and LAX Coastal Blog, and you trust everything that I write and post, and you wanna automatically share it, anytime I post something, it'll automatically share it to your social, social media news feed. This is a way to make it seem like you're doing social media when you're literally not doing anything. <laughs> Natalie said that it was great because she's like, I could not log into something and I'll go in and I've had four posts for the day that people are commenting on and active and like and sharing and all sorts of stuff. So it keeps you relevant, it keeps you in people's eyes and it involves very, very minimal work. Of course, 100% trust 
this page because if you're going to be automatically sharing it you better make sure that it's something that you're going to trust and it's not somebody posting an obscene photo or something of course i'm sure like the la times and things like that are relatively safe although the la times might post too many times because then you're going to have like 50 million shares every day but look around try to find resources that you read that you trust that your clients or your people or your friends will like and will be interested in and add it and Come back and let me know. I'm going to try and do it for the chamber and see what we've got. So let's see what we've got. Now we are on to business help. So business help is basically, so we did like <clears throat> learning help. We did, what was the other one? Computer help and business help is kind of vague because it's just things that I like that help me do business a little bit faster. They're not all specifically business oriented, but I use it for business. So Overpass is one of them. Overpass is an app that was told to me by one of our chamber members. Her name was Nancy and she was fantastic. I really adore her. She told us about Overpass, which is an app that you download on your phone for free. You get better stuff for pay, but even then I think for pay is like $50 a one-time fee and then you're done. And what you do is every time you go to an event and you get 50 million business cards that you don't want to sit down and write down who their name is, what their title is, what company, what their email is, what their phone number is, all you do is you take a photo and this app does something absolutely fabulous, which is it does not use a computer. It literally sends that photo to a human being and that human being looks at it and puts it into an Excel spreadsheet and sends it back to you and also puts it in the app. They do that because that way you can send them. I, I tried to trick them. I sent them one where there was no name on it. I sent them one that there was no company in it and they like filled in the blanks or they left it blank. And they like to do the human aspect because you can actually chat with them and go, hey, I'm having difficulties with this one or what's your ETA? And they will respond to you and they're wonderful and they're very polite. And then you can say, once they've filled everything in, you say, send me the spreadsheet. They send you an Excel spreadsheet. You can copy and paste everybody's email, send them an automatic email going, it was so wonderful to meet you at this event last night. And it looks like you spent a lot of time on it and you literally did almost nothing except you took a picture of it, which is great. I love it. Kelly, you've used it before. Did it work? Was it wonderful? wonderful. See, it's wonderful. They, they do tell you that if you're for free, you can do up to a certain number and they'll go, oh, it might take us a couple of hours to get to it. Cause you know, if you were a paid, then we might get to it a little bit faster. I have had them turn stuff around within five minutes once we've paid $50. So it's, and it's literally, it's a one-time fee. It's not monthly. It's just, you pay it one and done and it's wonderful. They are fantastic. I really like it. So if you ever get a lot of business cards, do a lot of networking, this will save you tons of time. Doodle, who hates scheduling meetings? Everybody hates scheduling meetings. Meetings are horrible. So Doodle is the fastest way to find out when to schedule a meeting. You literally just go in, you say, these are the people that I want to come to the meeting. These are the options I have for the dates and the time slots. It sends an email to everybody and they select which dates they are available. And then once you have a majority on one date and one time, it says, this is the time you should schedule your meeting. It automatically sends an email again to everybody saying, this is the time of the meeting. We hope to see you there keeps you from having to email everybody individually and going like, well, you're available Tuesday, but he's not. So what about you? You're going to be the tiebreaker. Are you available Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, you can't do either of those days. Okay. Well, what about Thursday? It's a, it's, it's tiring. Nobody wants to do that. So doodle helps simplify the process. Sign up genius does the same thing with volunteers. So if you've ever hosted an event and wanted volunteers to come in and you need different volunteers to fill in different time slots, takes a lot of time as well. This you say, these are the time slots available. This is what we need. And people can go in and say, I can take the two to four time slot at the YMCA, or I'll do the four to six time slot at WAM, or I'll do the one to three time slot at the chamber of commerce. It's a really simple way of doing it. The LAX coastal education foundation uses is this. Um, I do not know. I'm guessing it is not free because it says pricing up at the top, but maybe there's a free version. I don't know, but I'm guessing it's not a million dollars. And if you do a lot of stuff with a lot of volunteers, totally might be worth it. When we did the inaugural rock roll and run, this was a lifesaver for us because we had so many things that had to happen and so many people wanted to volunteer. And for one person to sit down and try and make that schedule is ridiculous. And then the moment two people email you and say, I want the same time slot. And then you have to go back and be like, well, which one of you really needs that time slot? Simplify the process. You'll be able to work faster. Time cult. 
This one, I put a weird little disclaimer on it because I know this looks like spam. I know 100% that this website looks like you're downloading a virus or something. It does not, it looks shady. It, it's, it only has three reviews, but it's been up for a million years. I have used this for more than five years and it is my favorite thing in the entire world. Time Cult tracks your time perfectly. You literally open it, you say, I am working on the LAX Coastal Chamber annual report. You push start, it chills in the background, it does whatever. The moment you're done, you push stop and you get this nifty little log that says, these are the dates and times you worked on this project. This is how often you did it. You can separate it by clients. You can separate it by project. You can separate it by what's really important, what isn't important. You can have tasks within it. You can have activity within it. And it's a nice handy little record. For somebody like me who works for the chamber and for coworking and my own side business, it is so easy to be able to separate this and be like, right now I'm working on stuff for WIT, Workforce Improvement Trainings. Right now I'm working on stuff for Woodhill Solutions. Right now I'm working on stuff for Kevin and Kaz. And then that way it helps me not only keep track of my time, because how many people have thought that they worked on something for 20 minutes and it's really been two hours? You never know, it helps. There's also something, and I haven't used this yet, so I didn't put it on here, but I saw it was like this weird little cube that you could program to your computer, and it was like a dice, and every side you could write something new, and you just turn it to that side to say, like, I'm on a coffee break, I'm answering emails, I'm working on this, and then at the end of the day, it sends you a spreadsheet and goes, you spent this much time drinking coffee or this much <laughs> and so, yeah so so that one i don't know if i want it to tell me every little thing like you spent 45 minutes going to the bathroom i don't know if i want to know this but if you're doing stuff more often because the only downside to time cult is that you do have to tell it now I've stopped, or now I'm paused, or now I'm doing something. And then you go and change it when you're doing the next thing. But that one, it's just you rotate it and it does it automatically. Never use it, have no idea how much it is, but who knows. Time Cult, totally free, totally worth it. I love it. It's not spam. It's not a virus. Or if it is, it's very subtle because it's been on three different computers and I've never noticed anything go wrong. <laughs> Whoever has to send files to people that are sometimes too large to add in an email. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of WeTransfer? One of my printers introduced me to WeTransfer, and I know I've said this about almost everything, but it has changed my life. WeTransfer lets you send any files up to two gigabytes worth totally free to whoever. So you don't have to put it into your Dropbox to have it take up space in your Dropbox and then send them a download link. You literally temporarily add it to this. You just say add files. It doesn't download it. It takes it straight from your hard drive and say, I want to send it to mark at torographics.com. They're one of our printers in the chamber. I send them a lot of stuff. And I say, hey, here's the chamber's annual report. Go ahead and print it for me. You say transfer. It sits in the background. It sends it. You don't have to pay attention to it. It sends you an email when it's done, so you literally don't have to pay attention to it you just can't close it and then it sends you an email when they've downloaded it so that you know that they have it the link lasts for seven days so normally what I do is once I've started sending it to them I send them an email and I go hey the file is on its way to you via we transfer let me know if you have any issues and then you also put your message in there so it'll be like hey this is Kirby this is the file I promised you so that they know that it's something that is safe um, it the only thing that kind of sucks is that because it it gets it deletes the link after seven days, if it's something that they might want to download multiple times or like, oh, I forgot it, then you have to send it again. But it's still much better than bogging down your email inbox because I think Gmail doesn't let you send anything over 20 megabytes in an email and it's just, it's ridiculous. So this makes it so much easier. And you can add tons of files. You can add as many files up to two gigabytes. So if you're sending 200 files that are less than that, you can go ahead and do that too. It's really, really easy and I love it. It's fantastic. Now for money help. These things you all have probably heard of, but I'm just gonna stress how absolutely wonderful they are. Square is fantastic. Square is the best way of getting credit card payments outside of actually using some sort of like old school swipe system. You can take it on the go, you connect it to your phone unless you're an Apple user and then you don't have the little headphone jack anymore in your iPhone, which is super sad. Um, but Android, Android still have it. There's a new Square for Apple. Oh. Okay, well then you gotta get the fancy square for Apple or you could just get an Android. What do you mean there's a new square for Apple? 
um, just Apple is redoing the squares. So, so you don't have to have all the it's, it's Yeah, so you don't even attach it. It's just like mobile. So, so you're you still redoing it though. No, no, it already came out. Like you don't even need your phone present. It's just like a card swipe. What? Like that one that they're showing like a tap. It what? Like, it's like, oh, like Depot has something. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally like the size of my wallet and you just take somebody's card and you just go like this in it. And it Oops. sends it right to your phone. Oh, oh I, I thought it yeah. had to be, you still had to. No, it's no cords. It's like Bluetooth. Well, no cord, but yeah, Bluetooth so has Bluetooth. To be on. So it would be like if you're in a meeting and your phone mm -hmm. is in the room and you're swiping. So, so as long as your phone is nearby. Yeah. Well, here's my question if you are using this for your office and you don't want it to go through your phone because everyone needs to use it, you use like <laughs> An iPad or something like that. Yeah. You can use, yeah, you can use like an office iPad. So for the chamber, because we have so many different avenues, we have it on like three different iPads, one tablet. It's on my phone. It's on Christina's phone so that you can always process credit cards even if somebody specific isn't there or you don't want. Because sometimes it's awkward to walk into Christina's office and be like, can I take your phone? And like, what, yeah, what type of tablet do you use? Um, we have three iPads and Judith has a tablet that... It's like an HP or something. Yeah, it's, it's some... So they can all go through the yeah. Yeah. same account. Yeah, so you just pretty much have to have one central login and then wherever you've downloaded the app or the software, you can do it. They also have a really good website um, that is great for reviewing your transaction and things like that because every so often I'm too lazy to pull out my phone or get the app or check it. So you can log straight into it and view your transactions, download reports, and it does a really good back-end system for you too so you can check what payments go through. Do they still take 5% Squarespace? I think they, yeah. they still take a, a portion. I don't think it's 5%. I think it's like 3.4 or something like that. They do take a portion, but you kind of pay for the convenience. It's more if you do it manually because you don't have to. Yes. Do right. Try yeah. try to swipe because they they take a smaller portion if you swipe, but you can. I've run into some credit cards that are so old that they don't swipe, and then you program it in. You just type it. I think then they take closer to five percent. I don't. I don't. Don't quote me on this. I don't know. Like if I'm in the marina, and mm -hmm. certain buildings I work in, and there's no yeah it's like a black hole there. So yeah. I know uh, Venmo. Just since you're talking about an X, came out. That's with the next a one. Card. Yeah. Card. So I just got one. Oh yeah, you yeah, were talking so about that. A company, you can set up like a Venmo account for your company, and you guys get like a debit card, even if it was your own home. Like Venmo, <coughs> yeah. they send mail you a credit card or a debit card, and basically all your Venmo money goes on yeah. that card. Oh, that's nice. So that you can like just make office purchases with that. Yeah. So that takes us to the next one, which is if you're not just taking credit cards, but if you're just doing money transactions from person to person, I love Venmo. Venmo's great. And Venmo, you can either do the Venmo card or you can connect it to your bank account and I can automatically request money from one of my clients or I can send money to a family member and it's a super streamlined process. It literally sends them a cute little text. It's like so-and-so sent you money and then you can heart it or comment on it. And that is the social media aspect of it, which is kind of adorable. Oh, I've never tried to use it overseas, so, yes. Does it uh, interface with QuickBooks, do they know? Um, I do not know. Venmo doesn't, Cash App does. There's also another one, Zelle. Um, Zelle is a new one that's a lot like yeah, Venmo. Lot banks are using it. Yeah. Yes. Um, that one I've learned is really good because a lot of the banks use it automatically. So because I have a Citibank account, I automatically have a Zelle account. So even if I don't have the Zelle app on my phone, somebody can send me money through it and my Citibank's just going to be like, oh, yes, we understand what this is. We're going to take that money, which is good because really, you want to be able to make people paying you as simple and as streamlined as possible. You don't want to make it difficult because you, you want money. That, that's really what it comes down to. The, the running joke that we have in here, um, one of our coworkers, Scott, he often talks about where sometimes it's like people will send invoices and they won't let you pay online or they won't let you do it direct. And he's like, do they hate money? Why are they making it so difficult for me to pay them money? So don't hate money. Find all of the ways that you can do it. And also right now, Venmo doesn't have any fees. That might change at some point, but right There's now it's still if good. You use a credit card though. Yes, if you do it, if you have it directly to your bank account. So then what I do is people pay me, I say send it to my bank account. I have to wait three to five business days, but there are no fees for that. And I normally don't need it immediately. Who yes? I did have an issue with Venmo. Ooh. You know how you put in the amount oh, and then mm -hmm. you give like a little description of what yeah. it's for mm -hmm. and they didn't like the one word that I put in there and we went back, they didn't send the money and oh. we went back and forth oh. for days. 
What you need to word? It's, it's what right? word? What word? What word? Is it not appropriate? For oh. <gasps> it was obviously not in the, in the appropriate. <laughs> Don't it's use bad words in Venmo. This is what we've learned. Because I had what? done a job at Intercontinental oh. Hotel downtown, and I wanted to make sure they, they didn't like they didn't the like word? that. Wow! So, and they wanted. How and weird. they went back and forward, and I finally said. If you're not going to send them money, I've given you the information you need. If you're not going to send them money, I'm done. And then they sent the money. But yeah. But it took like That's three or four days. Yeah. 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 yeah, maybe. Maybe. Venmo yeah. doesn't take it, yeah. but Cash App does. And but Cash it wasn't App international. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe with that word when they saw that plan. So don't yeah. put the word inter in there either. Yeah, so something Just, about that yeah. word. And I it's probably yeah. that it's. Yeah, Venmo does, yeah. does censor a lot more. Cash App doesn't, which is totally bizarre. Though also the weird thing about Venmo is you, I can see everybody I'm connected to. Yeah, like, I don't care when somebody's paying their maid. Do I don't, I don't. are probably worried about international hackers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. could be, like yeah. Well, don't hack stuff either, guys. That's bad. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, I don't even know how, so Venmo I can't. Venmo with a credit card, if I'm paying you yeah. with my credit card, do I? Yeah. So you get I the pay fee. The fee not I me. don't pay the fee, but like if I were to deposit immediately, it's 25 cents for me, or I wait two to three days. But yeah. I prefer Cash App because it's four cents immediately, and, and there is no fake. fee for credit cards. I've never hooked up my so. uh, like I receive money through Venmo, but I've never. I always use a credit card. Like it's safe to sign up your bank account. Like I've been on it for two years. Again, coworker Scott introduced me to it because I was doing freelance for a million years and was never accepting credit cards. I was telling people they had to send me personal checks, and everybody was like, "Come on, this is this is ridiculous." So he said he uses Venmo, and he had been using it for a while. So I trusted him, and I've been using it now for a while, and I haven't had any issues. Yes. And what's your bank account number? No. <laughs> I don't even know, man. <laughs> I gotta look that up. <laughs> um, my my brother and I, in our thirties, are still on the same family plan on our yeah. phones, and so every month I message, or, you know, Venmo, like, hey, send me your money, and then he sends it to my bank account from his bank account, and we have no problems. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, lots of. If anybody out there knows of any other options, let us know. We are always open to learning new things. Oh yeah, cash. Yes. App. All right, cash app. Also, write that one down, guys. All right, so now we're on to design help. Now, I am going to be completely honest with you guys because I am a designer for hire. I reached a point last night where all of a sudden I was like, oh crap, maybe I shouldn't be giving this because then they're not going to hire me to do stuff. But honestly, I, I don't care. If you guys can make your life easier and you don't hire me to do your design work, that's okay. That's one less thing that I have to do, so I don't mind. Although I do like helping you, so I don't, I don't care about that too. Ear fan view. Sounds really weird. Icon totally looks like roadkill. Again, looks a little bit like spam. This is like Photoshop basic, basic, basic for people who don't want to pay for Photoshop. It is I actually use it probably about 30% of the time only because it opens faster than Photoshop and it does really simple things much faster. So you can do, and actually I'll, I'll just show you guys. So say I have a picture, let's say I want to do this one, binge networking. This is a fabulous photo of binge networking. I want to crop it really quickly. All I do is I right click, I say open with ear fan view. It opens right here. I can immediately drag and drop, control Y, crop it. I go, oh hey, I want to rotate it. And then I can do that or I can undo that because that was ugly, you don't wanna do that. Or I can do color corrections. Let's say I wanna increase the contrast on it. You obviously don't wanna do this, but you can. You can auto tone it. You can draw on it. You can do a whole bunch of stuff that is basically really complex Photoshop things, but you do it super simple. I can also just Command R. So I use this a lot because when I put things into our weekly newsletter, it only looks at things that are a certain size. So I'll Command R, I'll say I want it to be 800 pixels, and then I automatically save it, put it on my desktop, bam. Or I go, oh wait, it needs to be a banner. Save that again, save over it, bam. It makes Photoshop super simple, super easy. So if you ever need to do any editing, any cropping, anything like that, download EarFanView. Again, the, the icon kind of looks like a smashed cat. I don't understand what it is, but it works really well. I like it. Yes. There. Here's a bonehead question. Are you on a PC? 
I am on a PC. Uh, mine doesn't have a command. Like, oh, I sorry. Control. control. It's like you're using Apple. My bad. Yeah. So I'm I. Like, I'm like, where? I've never known. I <laughs> yes. So so it's command slash control. That goes both ways. I have to use both a Mac and a PC a lot of the time, so my brain gets really confused. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm sorry. Control. Mac. Let's see. Nope. Only PC. Another reason of why PC is fantastic. I'm no, just going to say. Apple, I'm you get it in say. the iPhone. You don't even have to download or not. Mm. <laughs> this is a constant battle between me and Noemi, so just ignore her. Oh, I love pages. Who uh, needs word? Pages if you have any of this stuff, use it. Because, I mean, a lot of people, you used to be able to get Photoshop Elements, I think, for free or for a very tiny amount, and it would basically give you like 20% of Photoshop. You couldn't do everything, but you could do some. I think they got rid of that now that you have Creative Cloud. So you need some sort of thing. You This EarFan View is also really good because you can go into the back end and tell it what types of files you want it to be able to open. So every so often people will send me super random files that I can't even Google how to open this. So I go into the back end of EarFan View and go, I want you to be able to open a .xlq, which I, I don't think that's a real thing. But you can, there are some weird files out there that you can only open through this program. And then you can, in that program, then say, never mind, save it as a JPEG because I want to be able to use it like a regular thing and it makes it super easy. I like it and it's free and it's wonderful and Daisy is on the home page which is kind of adorable. I don't know who that is but it's cute. Mm -hmm. Pixel surplus. So I am addicted to free stuff that is helping me do design. I love fonts. I love free graphics. I love templates. I love mock-ups. I love all of these things. This is how you design. You basically just look at everything that already exists and you pick and choose the stuff that you like and then you make it your own. Pixel Surplus is a newsletter that I'm on where every week they send me a free font or a free stock photos or free templates or free mock-ups. If you saw what we did for the 4th of July parade and we did this really cool mock-up of what the 4th of July parade t-shirt will look like, that's something I got through Pixel Surplus. was super awesome. They give you Photoshop files, Illustrator files. They give you just straight up pictures. One of them I got was like a My Beautiful Llama, and it was a whole bunch of random illustrations of llamas that were super cute. No idea what I will ever use that for, but they were adorable. You never know. <laughs> and it sends you stuff all the time. They also send you like bundles of like, you can get this bundle of like $500 worth of resources for only 50 bucks. I've never done that because again, I like the whole free thing, but you never know. There might be something in there that you eventually want. But the fact that they send me free stuff every week, I love it. I download stuff all the time. Speaking of free fonts, there is a thing called Friday Fresh Free Font. I don't know how I found this, but literally every Friday this guy posts a blog of really cool free fonts and you can just download awesome ones. I normally only, he gives like four I think every Friday, I normally only download one or two because sometimes they're really ugly. Because if you've ever seen free fonts, like go to defont.com and just look at some of the fonts on there. You don't want them, but there are some that are really nice and you can go and you can just constantly download them and they're all archived. You can go back years and years and get tons of free fonts. You could sit here and get free fonts for days. I love free fonts. I have way too many. If you go into my, so with Adobe Cloud, um, Creative Cloud, you get access to something called Typekit and you can download a whole bunch of fonts. With your memberships, they used to not structure it to only a certain amount, but then they changed it to you're limited to only 100. So every time I download something, it's like, you have 849 fonts. You're only supposed to have 100. But I just keep ignoring that, and there are ways to work around it. So I have a lot of fonts. This is good. Pexels, for people who like beautiful stock images. Pexels is the best resource for free and pretty stock images out there. There are tons of other ones as well, but Pexels is my favorite. I use them like crack. You literally search business, nature, ocean, handshake, talking, drinks, and they give you all of these really great looking stock photos. Cause you know, you don't want to pay the ridiculous amount of money for the fabulous Shutterstock or Getty or all of those, even though they're fantastic. And you don't want to use the really free gross ones that you get through Google, where when you say, 
show me only things that are labeled for reuse, then you get some really bad stuff of people taking stuff with their cell phones or things that aren't pertinent to what you're doing. This gives you good quality stuff that is pertinent. The only bad thing is that a lot of people are starting to notice that Pexels is a thing. So there are some of the business ones that you're starting to see kind of everywhere. There's one of people shaking hands over a table right next to a window that I have now seen three different companies use and we use it a lot too. So I got to cycle that one out. But Pexels it's still great. trendy with their pictures though. So yeah. It's like what's modern right now. Yeah. They've got a lot of really cool things. There's one that pops up almost every time I search business and it's this one guy like laughing, leaning back in a chair and he has a post-it on his forehead. I, I don't know what the purpose of that is, but he's a good looking guy and it's a good looking photo. So you might use it, who knows? Have you ever tried Pixabay? No, but I'm gonna write that one down too. Kind of free, yeah, All right. pretty good. Stuff. Spell it, would you please? P-I-X-A-B. B-A-Y? I have to. Pixabay, people. This is apparently yeah. another one. I think I have four or five different websites that give free ones. One of them does really good free ones, but they're all like artsy, nature, clouds, stuff like that, that I really can't use with business all the time, but you never know. I used one of them for when we did the 4th of July parade and American Adventure. I got a really good one of like the mountainscape and the forest and a lake and like a dock going into the lake. So again, you never know when you might need them. So just search like free stock sources and you can probably find some really great stuff. Now this one is from Noemi. It is called Canva. And it also has the coolest website you will ever go to when you go to canva.com, mostly because when you put your mouse over it, it like does this really cool effect where it puts the stuff where your mouse is, it unblurs it and it makes it look really cool. I don't know how they did it and not slow down their computer, but it's really fun. It'll distract you for like a good 20 to 30 seconds once you're on their website. So play around with that. Um, I have never used this personally, obviously, because I am a designer for hire, but supposedly this lets you design your own flyers online. And it's supposed to be super easy, super simple. So if you don't have the budget or you don't have the time, or maybe you just don't personally like me and you don't want to have me do your flyers, do it yourself. Totally cool. You could get a design for like free five minutes instead of five hours, still charge five hours. No, I would never do that to you guys. That is a bad plan, but maybe. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I wouldn't. Um, but it, and it has like templates and stuff yeah, on there templates. too. So like um, there's, a, there's a bunch where like you could say like you're having a Mexican burrito party on Friday and it'll literally just pop up like literally a Mexican themed template and you just type what you want and you put the time and it's already got the burrito on there. and. It's everything. Um, and then when you download it, can you say, I want a JPEG or I yeah. want a PDF or yeah, I want... I think it usually saves them super large. So okay. it saves them like 24... That's good. You get high pieces. resolution. Is it print yeah. resolution for people um, who yeah, want to print? Yeah, it's for print. So it's already going to be CMYK. It's going to be 24 by 36. And if mm -hmm. you want it smaller, you could just hit like 8 by 10 or 8 yeah. by 11. Okay. And it usually saves as a PDF, but you can switch it to a JPEG if you'd like. All right. Super useful. So if you don't have time for designer and you have a little bit of time for yourself, you can just do it on your own. I'll probably mess around with it just to see what it does. I'm, I'm kind of curious now. Yeah, it's now. pretty fun for like office flyers, like something that you yeah. don't want to spend time on and you're like, hey, we're having a meeting mm. on Friday. It's like, yeah. it's not like a weird word typed up. And Oh yeah. yeah. Don't do word templates, guys. It's obvious you're doing a word template and it's bad. It's just bad. Don't do it. All right, so those are the ones that are like super professional and wonderful, but we have a couple things that are free bonus just because I like them and I think they are fun. Creative Caffeine. Creative Caffeine used to be something called Death to Stock, and they were like Pixel Surplus where I was on a mailing list and every so often they would do their own free stock images and they would send everybody a zip file of here are a whole bunch of free stock images related to people reading or related to people networking or related to people walking on the beach. And I really liked it. And then the guy who started it, David Daniel, something with a D, he, David Sherry, I believe, I think that is his name. He turned it into a message board, mailing list, thought-provoking discussion. Sometimes you do webinar conversations thing that sometimes you get multiple emails a day, sometimes you get emails every couple of weeks. And he just writes blogs or talks about really interesting topics or says things that are on his mind or asks questions and then people respond to it and then he sends everybody another email with everybody's responses. And then sometimes he does like live Skype sessions where everybody's 
just chatting and doing information. And then sometimes he still sends free stock images. It's a really cool mailing list that sometimes I don't have time to read, but when I do, it always raises really interesting questions. It has, it's all for people that are an artist or in the creative industry or care about the creative industry. So there's always something pertinent and it's just really cool to be a part of. I like it. Even if you don't have time, just delete it, but it's super fun. He also travels a lot, so you hear a lot about his travels, which is fun. So Far Sounds is something that one of our other coworkers, his name is David Resnick, told me about, and it is literally surprise concerts. So you say, I like this type of music genre, and it says there's gonna be a surprise concert on Wednesday in Hollywood and it doesn't give you any of the details until 24 hours right before and then you have no idea who's playing you have no idea who's going you have no idea where it is or what's happening but you can just show up to a random concert and it's super cool they're normally really small cool intimate you discover new local bands you discover indie bands you discover new cool people because you know anybody showing up to these are weird quirky people just like you who want to show up to a surprise concert just to let off some steam or unwind after a long day and i really like it my dad is a huge music fan so i'm trying to get him into this because i think it would be awesome to just be like you know what i'm going to go to a random concert tonight and i have no idea who's playing i don't even know really what genre it is and i just know it's somewhere in a five mile vicinity so i'm just going to go it's cool i like it if you have time to do it, do it. And the last one, this is super nerdy, but this is something that I have downloaded within the past like three weeks. And if you have even a tiny competitive bone in your body, this thing will change your life within a couple of hours. Only because my boyfriend and I downloaded this app called Level Up Life and it turns your life into a video game. It literally makes every single thing you do an achievement. You have a conversation with a stranger, you get plus two charisma and 70 experience points. You host a presentation, you get 2,000 experience points. There are all sorts of really, really dorky things on this, but you get achievements, you level up. Every new level, you get more achievements. If you have somebody you're doing it with, we have literally been laying in bed getting ready to go to sleep and then I'll notice he got the do squats achievement and I did not for that day and I will get my ass out of bed and I will start doing squats just so that I can compete with him. <laughs> we, we have gone out of our way to do really awkward things. Like I, one of them was take photos with a tripod. I'll just hook up the camera on a tripod, take some random photos of the office and be like, boom, I got the achievement and I know he can't do it because he doesn't have a tripod or a camera. <laughs> so. And he's getting me on like all of the humanity stuff of having conversations with strangers and offering help. And I, I've discovered I, I, I never offer help. I, people ask for help and I will give help, but I don't just offer it. So he gets that achievement almost every day and I'm really annoyed. But he doesn't read as much as I do. So I just start reading like crazy. Finish a book, get an achievement. Read a chapter of a book, get an achievement. Read about somebody who inspires you, get an achievement. It's totally silly, but I, literally exercise way more every single day. I'm reading more every single day. Every time you read or watch the news, you get an achievement just to get stuff. One of them was go camping. We up and went camping. And then we were like, this is multi-achievement because it spends some time outdoors, go for a hike, go swimming in a river, go camping, go stargazing. It's totally silly, but I'm telling you, if you're even a little bit competitive, it works. And I have done so many more things throughout my day. Every time you eat a healthy snack instead of junk food, you get an achievement. <laughs> Five portions of veggies and fruits, get an achievement. Drink eight glasses of water, get an achievement. It's, it's totally dorky, but within three weeks, we're both up to level 13 because we take this way too far. But so they computerized the, the participation medal that everybody Yes. Pretty well, much, like yeah. Perfect for so, people who got a trophy for everything. Yeah, it's and it's super dorky and it's super fun, but I'm telling you, it, it works. I've done so many squats over the past three weeks. <laughs> it's it. ridiculous. <laughs> well, yeah, that's another thing. It shows the community. So anybody who uses it, every time you post an achievement, it says like so and so got this achievement. So you can. So sometimes I've gone in just to see where people are like. I read this book, or hey, I just saw this movie, and they'll, you can add photos, you can add comments, or you can just get the achievement, and sometimes they're really weird things. And some of them are totally bizarre, but they make you think. Like one of them is uh, call a relative just to chat. 
I've never called my moms and my aunts and my uncles so often, and but they love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> they like hearing from me. Reconnect with an old friend, and then I'll go, oh, I haven't talked to so-and-so in a long time. So it does some really good, positive things, The and it has a whole bunch of stuff that's specific to your career, stuff that's specific to fitness, stuff that's specific to studying, stuff that's specific to travel. Um, the only thing that I think they're missing is stuff that's specific to environmentalism, because I think if there were achievements for like pick up five pieces of trash on the street or recycle something that we would get a little bit more positive stuff out of it. But they do have some things of like switch to energy efficient bulbs and things like that. So it's fun and every new level you get more achievements that you can get and it makes you more social, it gets you a little bit healthier and it helps you win stuff if that works for you and that totally works for me. So I talked a little bit longer than I expected, um, but I would still like to hear from you guys on what you guys like to do to be more productive and if you have any shortcuts or anything that you do. So really quickly, I'm gonna stop this camera. Again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for Tips and Tricks for Productivity with Kirby. There will probably be more of these because I always learn more things and we can always just have lunch together and hang out. So if you missed me here, come next time. All right, so now we are here for the second part of our Lunch and Learn. Unfortunately, we had quite a few attendees that had to leave for time reasons because as usual, Kirby talked way too long. Um, but now I've talked a lot about what I do to be more productive with my work day and the resources that I use and all the shortcuts that I use and things that make my life easier, but I wanna hear what you guys do. So first, let's really quickly introduce ourselves and say who we are and kind of what we do and why we are here. And then we'll hear from all of you guys of what you do to be productive. Hey, my name is Lewis Berklow. I'm a writer. And I have to be honest with you, my version of productivity is to use as little as possible. <laughs> use what as little as possible? Anything that's online because Going one place online leads to going other places online. Ah. And I've got that kind of rambling curiosity. Where you don't want to get sucked thing. into a YouTube the, world the deep dive. Yes. Yeah. Dark yes. Web. You do, well, actually, it's hysterical that you mention that because we used to have somebody who worked here named Christine. And when she left, we went to use her computer, and her computer started yelling at us when we were using it because she had put those like blockers and stuff on it where it would tell her once she, like you can't go to facebook.com, that is not productive. <laughs> or you've been on this website for more than five minutes. And we were so confused, we're like, what is up with this parent block that is on this professional computer? So I guess she realized she had the same issue and use stuff with it. I actually have something called a padlock that is, everybody makes fun of me for using it in the office. It's a human shock bracelet and it, is I use it for the shock clock, which is you can pair it with your alarm clock and it wakes you up by electrocuting you, basically. It's not like a super, it, you're not gonna die, it's just like, um, and it It's more like the electromagnetic that you get in a chiropractor. Yeah. I wouldn't say a yeah. shock. Oh, yeah. so, like a dog collar? <laughs> yeah. it, it's kind of like, it, it's a very uncomfortable bracelet. I don't like sleeping in it, but it does wake me up. And it's supposed to train you to the point where, because it's negative reinforcement, you'll start waking up naturally before your alarm because your body's like, I don't want to get shocked, let's wake up. So it helps change that. But they also use it to change behaviors and you can connect it, welcome Kelly, you can connect it to your browser and say anytime I go to youtube.com or facebook.com, it will shock you well. so that you won't do it. I don't do do it that hardcore anymore, but it, it is so my, my two biggest time sucks that I have to when I go on, I have to tell myself you only have a few minutes. One is Pinterest, because any picture that I see that I like, I will pin. And the other is Quora, which I've been I trying to write Quora. answers a lot more for them lately. That's good. I wouldn't say that that's bad, because that's also a little well, bit of writing practice. It's critical thinking. It's when you write an answer that's good. Oh, yeah, that's it's true. It's when if you get involved reading. in some email trail of responses. <laughs> You realize why am I caring so much about whether you know this point I'm trying to make? Quora, <laughs> K U O R A. Okay. It's basically an online message board where people post questions <coughs> and they go, "Hey, you know, I'm trying to do such and such, and people can respond." All and different tell topics. You, oh yeah, yeah. You list what areas oh. you yep. are interested in or knowledgeable in. Yeah. Like I have things like American history and the NFL and uh, American movies and you know. 
it's usually the fields I answer questions in. It's the original Reddit because my yeah. mom now uses Reddit and that's her favorite thing in the entire world. But again, time suck. She's on it for a million hours every day. I know, I've already saved four questions to answer for later. And I <laughs> can't really answer one a day. <laughs> All right. What about you? Who are you? What do you do and why are you uh, here? I'm Remy. I'm do graphic design and uh, I'm just getting into presentation design. Mm -hmm. So I like anything that like saves time or keeps track of time. Pixel um, Surplus has sent me quite a few different design templates yeah. for presentations that I have saved for yeah. future reference. Um, I really like plan only if you get into social media or you have multiple socials that you need to post. Is it um, better than Hootsuite? Yes, because it lets you like I can pull up the app. So it's an app. I don't know if it works on a desktop. I've never tried, but it lets you look at scheduled and unscheduled. Uh -huh. So you can figure out how you want to post things. Like if you are like, I want to do three black and whites, a roll of blues, a roll of pinks, like if you're a oh, photographer. So you can go cool. around and play around with how your pictures are going to look on your Instagram when posted. Mm -hmm. And then you can set to post every day at 12 or how that goes. You can do your type in kind of like use yeah. Hootsuite. But this one's, I think, more for aesthetic layout. Okay. Hootsuite, I think, is more for um, actual, like, content. actual content. Uh, I really like... Hootsuite still is not interacting very well with Instagram, so I'm, okay. I, I'm getting angry at it. Hootsuite, seriously, fix your Instagram. It's not working. Um, I told you about Adobe Capture, which yes. I really like if you're a designer. And I told... Oh, who did I tell this morning? Chad, maybe? I heard you talking to somebody. Was it Chad? Was it Chad? You told the group. No, I didn't talk about... I talked about Adobe Creative Cloud. I didn't talk about yeah, Adobe so Capture. Yeah, so Adobe Capture is nice because even if you don't somebody. have Creative Cloud, if you draw an image and even if it's like Maybe fonts, chat, you could yeah. just take a picture of it and it vectorizes it for you so that it throws it in Adobe instead of you having to sit there and draw it on your computer. You can make your sketch. Another one that's really nice about that is called MyScan. It's an app, so it takes every picture and it makes it a PDF. So instead of faxing or scanning, you can just take a picture, crop it, and it's already a PDF. Oh. Yeah, so MyScan is a really fun app. So the next time somebody comes in asking for a fax machine, we'll go, you should use MyScan instead. Yeah, that's MyScan great. is super like fun. Um, you mentioned the other uh, like texting group Yes. chat thing. Mm -hmm. There's two of them that I use. I use Slack more in like office spaces or design. I've heard a lot of yeah. people really like Slack. Slack is really nice because if you have like a teacher or a boss, they can say this is what we're doing mm -hmm. and basically put a time on it and then add everybody to that group and then you can have multiple groups within your Slack. So if your employers or your company's mm -hmm. like 20 people, you can have five people in this group, 15 in this and 20 in everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you could see when people are on, when people are working yeah. and like basically you can download all your files. So it's kind of like how you were saying, but I really like Slack. Um, cool. Try count is nice for money. If you're like purchasing things as an office and you're trying to keep track of who bought what, you basically mm -hmm. put like That's all your, yeah, so Try Count is an app where like it's also nice for trips. Like if you go, we spent sixty on oh, gas, eighty on that. food. Yeah. yeah, so it's like if you spent sixty on gas, eighty on food. Let's say hundred dollars on like bathroom supplies or whatever, and then you put in who's going it to pay for it and how many people, and it divides it evenly for you. That and, is actually yeah because that would actually bring our office together and yeah. allow us all to yeah. get to know. So Try Count is really what we're doing. It yeah yeah very cool yeah so those I, those are the ones I really use. Um, pretty much all the time. I like Cash App a little bit more than Venmo, as I mentioned. because I have not tried Cash App, yeah. so I might. Because I, I like to Venmo instantly, so I don't like paying 25 oh, yeah. cents every time, so I'd rather pay four cents. I'm, I'm Wait, okay the with cash. The, the Cash App is basically Venmo. Um, it's a different app, though. It's called Cash App. But less fees and you can Less fees and you don't get fees on credit cards, which is nice. Oh. Venmo you do. Do you, you say think. Cash App me? Yeah. Venmo me is like in my vocabulary. Yeah, cash app. <laughs> or Venmo doesn't work as well. Yeah, I notice a lot of people don't have Venmo, and they and that's how why I don't the cash app because people are like, oh, just cash app me, and I was like, what is this cash app? I felt weird, like I thought you it was like millennials. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many apps for money now. Generational. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah, Adobe Sketch is really nice. I don't know if you've used that one. It's um basically an app where if you're drawing something. It also goes to your Creative Cloud, so if people have Creative Cloud, it's just something that you can doodle up on your phone. It's good for notes, too. If you like doing more fingers than Very writing them. Cool. Yeah. Those are all the apps I use daily. But another one, if you guys are also planning and you forget snacks or drinks, Saucy is really nice. It works in the LA area. It's basically Uber Eats, 
but it's alcohol and anything you can get at a liquor store. Oh. <laughs> so it's nice like if you're doing an event. I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, I know. So, so no, nice use of all, all <laughs> of the times so that Christina forgets wine for executive yes. board, we'll sauce it. We'll sauce yeah, it. Yeah, so you don't have to like send somebody out. She is of legal I'm age. 22. I know she looks young, but We've she looked is at her ID. alcohol. <laughs> yeah, but saucy is really nice because you put your um, ID on um, file, so mm -hmm. basically you're not having to go in and if you're like in this building, you could say, oh, we're having an event, we need this, this, and this, and then somebody will come up and deliver it and just check the ID on the, mm -hmm. on the account. Super cool. Yeah. So you can order it in one of the Which is, I was going to say, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> great. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not that good. People tried it in high school. It doesn't really work. They really do check one ideas. person. There. Yeah, you think uh, yeah. No underage drinking. Wait till twenty one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> None of us drank underage either. That's right. No. But saucy only really works in West LA and like the West Side, um, South Bay. It usually takes a little longer. It'll probably go. grow, but yeah, right now. Yeah. But saucy is pretty nice if you're doing events and you're like, oh, we forgot bags of chips. You can get anything that's like. Oh, yeah, no, anything oh, at a liquor no. store. Yeah, it's anything like, at a liquor store. I care store. more about the snacks. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> so like, you can yeah. get Cheetos delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yes. so it's anything at a liquor store. Yes. So, because with Uber Eats, you're getting more meals. So it would be like if you're hosting an event and you're like, I just need tortilla chips and salsa. We forgot it. Mm. You just said it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. So that means you can use that now instead of forcing somebody when they show up. Yeah. Well, yeah. The yeah. And Saucy yeah. is Girl, nice because if, if you're not buying alcohol, there's no need for the actual the ID, ID but everything else is super nice. From candy to the How are the, ice cream. How are the prices? It's literally the same as going to a liquor store. They basically they which is already a little bit expensive. Yeah. So what they yeah. yeah. So what they do is they find a liquor store in your area. Oh, and, and they'll and tell you what's out, yeah they'll tell you what's out of order or not, which is nice. Did you yeah. just download it? No. <laughs> <laughs> like you had a TV She's smile. like, chips are already <laughs> on their way. <laughs> nice. What about you? Uh, my name is Michelle Vieira. I'm a certified professional organizer, so I was very interested in the topic and always Maybe you need to have her. dinner with her instead of me. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. <laughs> We had a conversation this morning about organizing my my uh, Life. desktop. Yes, oh. <laughs> desktop thoughts. Excellent. So. Um, so you, a lot of the things were new to me. Some of them weren't, and so I just appreciated the topic. Um, one of the things that I love for productivity is this gal right here, which is my iPhone, and I use it for so many things. I know you're Android, but the love for the iPhone. Um, I use um, the notes feature a ton, and so I would put everything in notes. Like, um, you know, I'm out somewhere and I learn about a new snack. Oh, what's the name of that chip? Instead of writing it on a mm -hmm. napkin or something or post it, well, I love post its too. Um, you know, then I, could, I put it in notes, which is searchable. So use that a ton, um, and then you can email it, you can annotate it. So a lot of times, if I'm taking pictures of something, then I will put it in notes so like like let's say it's a file cabinet and I need the dimensions of it because we're doing a move and so I can annotate the photos on the iPhone. Um, still love the notes feature on it and now I've started to use Evernote a whole lot more. I and tried so to I use was, Evernote and I didn't get into it but um, maybe I need to give it another chance. Well what I love about Evernote is it's multi-platform so if I don't have the iPhone and I want to use it on my laptop or on a tablet then everything is all synced and so it's really a great way to synchronize everything together because there are certain things that are um, in the iPhone that don't sync with my Outlook, so that kind of can get frustrating at times. Mm -hmm. So Evernote's kind of a great way to have it in one place, and this um, the searching is amazing on it. There's just there's so many things that are constantly being added to Evernote. Um, what else? Oh, I don't forget about analog because um, here in my emotional baggage, then oh, I have, <laughs> which I like to carry Not with me instead of with me. There you then, go. Um, I have my little thing of, this is just like what I have when I travel in it and it's kind of heavy right now because it depends on what I'm doing, but I'd like to have everything here that's kind of like my backup set. So if I'm working remotely, like at LAX um, co-working space or something, um, then I will have my um, extra sets of everything, the screen cleaner, and then this, this is kind of a neat little doodad, you know, which goes in the car, oh, yeah. and then it plugs in, and oh. um, yeah, it's got two USBs, and um, one. oh, and here is an example of my P-Touch labeler, which, you know, because you want to keep track of your Label stuff, but um, external mouse, you mentioned it already, like, it's such a saver, because that, on the laptop, that 
that finger mouse. Oh, arthritis. Right. Don't do it. Not yeah. Table, yeah. Um, I love my external monitor, so I mm -hmm. couldn't really bring it with me, but to be able to see, like, for scheduling purposes, like, mm -hmm. what days am I available, that sort of thing. Um, this is just like, oh, and this is that, um, the battery backup thing. Oh, yeah. Right? Because it's great, but if your tools run out of gas, which mm -hmm. some of these apps will really burn your battery, so it's yep. great to have one of these external charging things. So, um, Fuel Rod is really nice. They make them, and they have them at Disneyland, airports, and the piers, yeah. like basically high populated places. So it's 30 bucks, and you just drop them in, they give you a new charge one every time. <laughs> it's only $30. Oh. It's a $30 one time fee. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, so that probably cost you 20 but you have to recharge it. But yeah. this, it's like any time there's a station, you just get a new one that's charged. Oh. And you could still recharge it and keep yeah. it for yourself, which is it's nice. It's kind of like a scoot, one of those scooters. Yeah, those scooters, yeah. 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 Right. I okay. love birds. They're so great. Um, Except I've seen a lot of people fall on those. There's a whole Instagram uh, towards people who really just like those birds, and they're just destroying them. It's called bird graveyards. If you ever get bored. Well, the worst thing is that maybe don't just destroy them. The the yeah, that's it's it. people trip over them yeah. and the cars. If you ever want to um, see something really funny, go to a S Santa Monica City Council meeting when birds yeah. on the agenda. <gasps> yeah, that is. I don't know if I want to do that, but it does sound entertaining. Yeah, because they've been trying to get rid of them. A lot of cities are. I know Playa Vista did. You technically not allowed to ride them in Playa Vista. They'll take you. I would say too on Evernote, it's a great sharing tool because you can see the lists of other people in your group if they choose to share it with you. So it's good for the office. You can see your to-do list. There's so many. I'm list. just kind of getting into it, but there's okay. so many cool things. So I need, I need to Evernote. investigate it, Evernote again. Yeah. I need to give it then she can yell at me and go, I sent it to you <laughs> for the usual. I right? never do that. <laughs> we use it a lot for collaboration on projects where multiple organizers are working on a certain job and you can have like mm -hmm. client notes in there. Oh, and this is a shopping list for them, this mm -hmm. is the resources, this is details yeah. about all the different vendors that are working on the project, so. No, that's um, really great, actually. I yeah. think that would work well in our office. That would work well. Uh, right now, when we do events, a lot of times Christina just has a Pinterest board and sends us uh, pictures, but it only works if you have a Pinterest and she shares it with board members and stuff like that. But that, of course, is normally only the visual aesthetics. You don't get a lot of the notes and the resources that go along with it, so. Um, all right, well, what a, any, anything else? Well, that's good. Thanks. All right. I'm good. What about you? Introduce well, who you are, what you're doing here, and how are you productive? Oh, I'm not productive. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Kelly Trombley, and I work for the LAX Coastal Chamber of Commerce, and I get to work with business relations, so I get to meet all of you and get to know you better. And one of the things that I am, many of the things that I am learning from Kirby, I actually refer to Kirby on many of these topics because I am not a techie person, but um, I am. So you are productive by using me as a resource. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is a brilliant resource to use. So, hey, they said work smarter, not harder. There so. you go. Um, one of the things that I am going to be learning about is Marco Polo, which is something that I noticed that you haven't, um, which is a, um, and I'm going to actually let you talk on it more because you have, you and Christina have mastered it. So Marco Polo is this hysterical little app that you wouldn't think would make you be productive or would help you in any sort of business sense because it's literally, it's a uh, like walkie talkie Snapchat. FaceTime pretty much. Yeah, so it's like Snapchat except things don't disappear, where you basically leave video messages to each other. And you can also talk to each other in live time, like I can be recording a message and it'll say, Christina is watching you, and then she can send a video right afterwards. So it's literally you send videos back and forth. Again, it's mostly for social purposes, but we use it a lot for both business and social. So every so often if I know she's out like doing something and she's not responding to her texts or she's on the phone or something, I can just send her a quick one or go like, hey Christina, what was the street that you said that apartment was on that I should look at? And then I leave it and then she'll respond back and be like, oh, it was on Pershing. And then sometimes I'll be like, you know what, I just had a brilliant idea, let's talk this out. Or, hmm, I wanna talk about different ways where we can communicate. And sometimes it's just, it's nice to get the visual and sometimes I can go like, hey, I'm working on this annual report. And then you can turn the camera around and you go like, did you like this layout better or did you like this layout better? So it's not just voice and you don't have to attach things to emails or anything like that. And it's instantaneous and it's beautiful and it's totally dorky. But I also get a lot of really adorable stuff where I'll get her daughter Michaela saying hi or I'll hear her in the back going like, Auntie Kirby or something like that. or she'll. 
she'll send me stuff when she's on vacation but will also respond to work and it's just it's it's a wonderful resource uh and i think it helps because sometimes uh, even in a small team it's hard to have good communication between each other and sometimes if you're shouting All across rooms ways, yeah. or trying to catch each other when you're off the phone or sending each other emails you lose a little bit of the social personal aspect so sometimes it's nice christina had me download it in the beginning because she said i'm on vacation and i want to see your face so sometimes it's nice to just be like hey kelly how you doing i know you're out at that ribbon cutting but i wanted to let you know i'm super proud of you and have a good day and it's just it's adorable it's cute and one of the things that I've noticed with um, what her and Christina do, like she said, she can look at something and go like this. Oh, okay, so do you want it on the left or do you want it to the right? Or do you want the color to be more blue or more pink? Yeah. And so it just allows um, another form instead of it being so impersonal. Or you don't really have time to type it and you just want to talk it out really quick. And or you don't it. have time to sit next to each other and look at the exact same thing. Yeah. And it stays in their inbox and they can look at it two hours later, but they'll still see everything. And then you can go back and review view old videos and stuff like that so it's helpful I like it for the uh, more mature person who doesn't text as fast yes. <laughs> well because that's the thing or um, email as fast I I can I can email fast but I hate texting so I do a lot of voice to text when I'm texting the team but voice to text is not always 100% accurate it has no idea how to spell her name it spells her name wrong every single every time. time sometimes it has no idea it thinks like no, the letter M and then me, yeah. it doesn't understand that no M-E is a word and it'll do all sorts of funky things. So it's so much faster to be like the moment something's on your brain, be like, oh, hey, did you want to do this on Saturday or do you want to do it on Sunday? And then you put it down and you forget about it and it's beautiful. And it goes to your inbox or it's, it has it its own in inbox? The app. So it okay. pretty much what it does, it'll send you a notification of, it'll say, Christina is talking to you right now. But if I don't see it at that moment, it changes into Christina left you a message. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I have time, I go to it. Or sometimes it, it gets a little needy where it'll be like, Christina's online right now. You haven't talked to her all day. Did you want to talk to Christina right now? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I talked to her in person, but I'm okay. busy. Like, thank you. There's another fun one that might work since you guys' office are right next to each other. Mm -hmm. The name is House Party, mm -hmm. but it works really well. Like me and my roommates used to do it because it works where it'll say Noemi's online, mm -hmm. so then you can join that group. But if you want it to be a private group, you hit private, so it's just you and your roommates. Mm -hmm. But if not everyone who has it can so join that the party. Whole, oh, then we because can all we be, did, so you guys can, can be, about all yeah. of us being on the same Skype channel, so we can yeah, see Yeah, so it's quicker than Skype, time. it's quicker than Skype, so it would be like, yeah. if Kirby went on, it said Kirby's on it, and if Kirby just needed to talk to Kelly, they can close the group and it's just Kirby and Kelly. Mm -hmm. But they can but open it, and then it. Chad can hop in, and Christina yeah. can hop in, and if I was like, oh, I wonder what they're doing, because it would be like, let's say you really needed to have a meeting with Kelly, but Kelly's in the marina and you're here. Yeah. I like house party, I do it with my brothers, mm -hmm. and it's nice because I could just be talking to one brother, and then the other one's like, oh, my siblings are on, and then he'll hop on, yeah. and it's like a, because you don't have to be invited, which is really mm -hmm. nice, you just pop in. Yeah. So it's it's like a nicer version of Skype, because you're not like being requested, or it's not a FaceTime, yeah. it's just immediate. That's cool. Yeah. That, that was, was the, the weird thing about Marco Polo is that it looks at your contacts. And as soon as I started yeah. on Marco Polo, even though Christina invited me, it was like, here are the 20 other people that you have in your phone that have a Marco Polo. So it was weird because some of those people, I'm like, I did a face painting gig for her four years ago. We haven't talked since. And then I realized, oh, maybe she shouldn't be in my contacts. Yeah, anymore. and that's what you could do is um, <laughs> not accept everybody. But some of house them, party, you have everybody yeah, on there. But some of them were, <laughs> the moment I was on, somebody that I hadn't talked to in like six months was like, hey, Kirby, I haven't seen you in forever. And again, connect with a friend you've yeah, lost again, contact yeah, with yeah, on yeah, Level yeah. of Life. What? Um, so it, it's cool. I like it. It's, it's silly, you wouldn't think that it helps professionally, but it, it kind of does, because sometimes you just need something that's a little more visual or a little more social, and if you're a small team like us, even if you're small, everybody is busy 25 hours of every day, even though we know that's not possible. So I'll try to talk to Christina five separate times within an hour, and every time I walk in, somebody's in her office, or she's on the phone, or she's like, ah, oh, let me finish this email, but I can just send her this and be like, I just had to tell you this one thing, okay, now I'm done, and then, and then you're and all then set. And then you can move on. Yeah. 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 yeah so. Anything else you do to be productive? Um, I come into your office and say, Kirby, help me out and help me do this. <laughs> no, um, you know, I just... Kirby I, is Google. Kirby yeah. is, Kirby's my Google. And then she says, Google it. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have it. Um, no, just trying to make sure that I make my lists and I stay organized and, you know, I know what I need to do. And 
um, I, I think lists, um, whether it's on notes or it's on any of the things that we talked about, I think lists are important just because it allows you to check things off and it allows you to feel that you've accomplished things. I love lists. Yeah. I know Although my lists, my lists are weird. I have a book of lists, I have papers of lists, and then I have post-its, and then I have digital lists, and then I have calendar invites, and all of them work together somehow. But I can't use only one because it doesn't work. Oh, and my hand. But Yesterday I had to talk to too. Tor Graphics and Natalie, <laughs> and I did both of those things. Yes. Has anybody used bullet journals? No, I keep hearing great things about them. But I've know. seen Pinterest, again, back to that. It's, it, it is a time suck. I'm starting to agree with you. Um, they have all of these beautiful designs of people doing bullet journals, and it's getting to the point that I'm like, that bullet journal looks so in-depth and so beautiful that I feel like that takes you 10 hours Oh, it definitely does. Yeah, you have to spend so much time organizing you have time. My friend yeah, used it for her wedding, and it just made her all sidetracked using bullet journal because she wants to color coordinate everything in yeah. a different font and everything. I prefer notes because then when you're done, you just toss it, and then you yeah. feel good about scrunching that post-it up. Or like, yeah. So. Clean yeah. yeah. It's, 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 like, it's gone. Is the one that you'll use. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That, is that true. works for you. People are constantly looking for yeah. the best, best, best. Mm -hmm. What's the best app? What's the best yeah. diet? What's the best this? The whatever. I think it really depends on what you do. Yeah. Because if you're a very yeah. social person, you're going to want all those social medias. Yeah. But if I love post its are my favorite for organizing projects because it's super simple. It's and, and I love the little mini brightly colored post its. Those are my favorite. The ones um, that are like. The sign they're, here ones, those little thin no, no, ones. No, no, the ones that they're like one inch by right. one and a half. Oh, inch. those like are fun. super small. Yeah. And I literally <laughs> just write every single project on it, and I'll yeah. go like um, Kevin and Kaz flyer, Scott Woodhill logo, chamber annual report, and all I do is I have right next on my eye level, right next to my computer, is all the ones I have to work on, and then once I'm waiting for feedback, I put it on my desk so that I don't see it. And then once it's time for me to work on it again, I put it up. So that way, every time I turn, I go like, oh, yeah, i got to work on that. And then if it's something I have to do that day, I'll put on my monitor or on my computer so that I see it every two seconds. And I go like, yes, I will do that today. And then once I'm done, put it down here. And then there's also a wall of shame on my bookshelf <laughs> behind me that's by the floor. And anybody, the that's taken, anybody that's taken more than six months to get back to me that I'm like, I'm pretty sure this project is dead, but they haven't told me it's dead, that goes in the wall of shame. And there is a post-it next to it that says wall of shame with an arrow. Nice. <laughs> I hope to never be on that wall. Yeah. Right. You're good. You'd be surprised. Nothing ever goes six months in this chamber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank well, you. Thank yes, you. thank you everybody for joining. Um, I like having these kinds of roundtable discussions, so I should probably do more Lunch and Learns that are you guys participating in it because all of us are a wealth of information even if we don't realize it. So I like us sharing stuff, which is the whole point of a co-working collaboration We should do space. one in October. Tricks and treats. Ooh, let's do more <laughs> treats, yes. Oh, I was going to say, read oh, it. her notes. Yeah. All right, well, thank you everybody. I had fun. Eat more food. And thank Take you, Benny's food. Tacos. For thank the you, Benny's lunch. Tacos, for the delicious food today. It was That's absolutely so fantastic. Yes. As always, Benny is one of the most fabulous people. Look at this. Benny'sTacos.com. Super delicious. Absolutely wonderful. One of the most generous men and proud chamber member. So he is a fantastic human being. Very good All Spanish right. rice. Yes. Thank you. Yay.